Under matrix analysis, we're tackling the topic state space representation for CISO systems, that is single input, single output systems. If we're given the nth order linear differential equation, which is non-homogeneous because of the presence of u of t on the right hand side, which is our input function, then we can be able to represent this system by a state equation of the form. Okay. X dot equal to a x plus b u of t where a is the system matrix x is a state vector with state variables x1 x2 all the way to xn b is the input matrix and u is the input function please note that the state vector contains all the information that anyone needs to know about the behavior of that particular system. Therefore, the state space model or the state space representation of the system can be given by x dot equal to a x plus b u of t and y equal to c transpose x. Note that Y represents the output or the response of the system and C transpose is represented by that row vector 1, 0, all the way to the nth term being 0. Just to get the ball rolling, we are asked to write down the state space representations of the given differential equations showing all steps we'll start with number one note that this is a third order um, derivative plus three times the second derivative plus two times d over dt minus 4y equal to e to the power negative t as our input function the first step is to let y be equal to x1 then we move from there if looking at our differential equation we've got y so it will be x1 now we need the second term dy over dt if y is equal to x1 then that means dy over dt is equal to the first derivative of x1 which is represented by x1 dot and we let that to be equal to x2 and then the next term requires us to have d squared y over dt squared represented as well by the change of variables. So d, the second derivative of y with respect to time is equal to x2 dot. And we let x2 dot be equal to x3. As we move on, remember that the last derivative that we had in our differential equation was the third derivative of y with respect to time. The second derivative was equal to x3. Therefore, the third derivative is x3 dot. And then we go back to the original equation, taking all the other terms to the right hand side. Please note, we cannot let x3 dot be equal to x4 because the highest derivative is the third derivative. So we can only have three state variables, which is x1, x2, and x3. And therefore, we can only have x1 dot, x2 dot, and x3 dot. So when we get to the highest derivative, we take all the other terms to the right hand side remembering that we had an input function which was e to the power negative t on the right hand side and then thereafter 
the next thing to do is to substitute our change of variables. We had let y1, y to be equal to x1, d over dt to be equal to x2, second derivative of y with respect to time equal to x3, and we take down the input function. So therefore now we have x3 dot equal to 4x1 minus 2x2 minus 3x3 plus e to the power negative t. Thus we have generated a, a, a system of the form. Remember we had said x1 dot is equal to x2. So in order for me to understand this perfectly, what I suggest is that all the other variables that are not represented by in x1 dot, please write them, their coefficients as zero. So hence I have here zero x1 plus x2 plus zero x3. And then we go to x2 dot. x2 dot we had said is equal to x3, making the coefficient of x1 to be zero and the coefficient of x2 to be zero. x3 dot is equal to 4x1 minus 2x2, taking it directly from that equation that we had already um, sorted out up there. X minus 2x2 minus 3x3 plus e to the power negative t. Then we write this in matrix form. Then we get the left hand side, we'll have x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot. And then the coefficients for x1, x2, x3 are 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, negative 2, negative 3. And also the coefficient for e to the power negative t. x1 dot did not have e, so hence we have 0 there x2 dot also did not have e to the power negative t, hence we have 0 as the coefficient for e to the power negative t, and thus we have only e to the power t with coefficient 1 in the last equation, hence we have 1 there. Also we need to recall that we had y equal to x1, hence I wrote here 1 times x1 plus 0 x2 plus 0 x3 so that I understand when I'm supposed to write in matrix form that I'll have C transpose as 1, 0, 0 because of our three variables, x1, x2, and x3. This is the whole state space representation. Note that these go together. Also, as stated earlier, please take note that the highest derivative of the differential equation determines the number of state variables that you will have in your state space representation. Some exercises for us to do. Determine the state space representation of the differential equation given and please write all the steps. Here is number one and number two. Once again, the highest derivative for number one is the third derivative. So that means you'll have x1, x2, and x3 as your state variables. So all in all, your A will be a three by three matrix. For number two, the highest derivative is the fourth derivative. Therefore, you'll have four state variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Please, even though we have, we don't have a term that has got y on the left-hand side, your first step is to let y be equal to x1, and then you move from there. Note that you don't have y, and you don't have the third derivative. But still, you will be able to represent this as a 4x4 system in terms of the state matrix and four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4.
4. Note that the coefficient of the input function now is 5. It's not 1. Please make sure that you do this correctly. Now we move to the solution of state space equations. I'll take you through the steps first, and then we do an example based on these steps. Note that when you are asked to solve a state space equation, these are going to be given to you. Firstly, x dot of t equal to a x of t plus b u of t. Definitely, you will know what a is, you will know what b is, and you will know what u of t is. And also, note that you will be given the initial conditions. In this case, for our solutions, we consider two by two systems. Therefore, you will only have x1 of 0 and x2 of 0 as your initial conditions. And your a will be a 2 by 2 matrix. And your x will be x1 of t, x2 of t. And x dot of t will be x1 dot of t and x2 dot of t. Now the steps to follow. Firstly, one, determine the spectral and modal matrices of the state space matrix. That is, you are supposed to determine those two, spectral and modal matrix. Note that there are other methods that are used to solve the state space system. But for our particular syllabus, we're going to only consider where the change of variable is required. Hence, we need first the spectral matrix and the modal matrix. And then once you've determined those two, the next step is to get capital letter B, which is M inverse multiplied by the original B that was given in the expression for x dot of t. Find m inverse, which we get from the modal matrix, and multiply that. We can easily do that using our calculators. Once you've got your b, then you can be able to write out the transformed equation z dot of t equal to the spectral matrix multiplied by z of t plus b times u of t. Remember, b is the one that you got in step two. So that means that's what you will be substituting in there. And the spectral matrix is the one that you got in step one. You substitute in there noting that z of t is also given there. So that means z dot of t will be z1 dot of t, z2 dot of t transpose. The fourth step is to calculate the initial conditions because you need it. You need those initial conditions. Z of zero is equal to M inverse multiplied by the original initial conditions with respect to X. So in order for us to know what are the initial conditions for the changed variable Z, we need to multiply M inverse of the original state matrix by the original initial conditions. Simplify and get Z1 of 0 and Z2 of 0. And then thereafter, step 5, solve for Z of t. That means you're solving for Z1 of t and Z2 of t, noting that 
you have to substitute the initial conditions to get rid of the constants that you're going to get in step five. The conditions have been calculated in step four. In this situation that we have here, mostly we use the integrating factor because of the kind of um, differential equations we get from this solution. We'll see when we get to an example that we're going to do just shortly. Once you've calculated Z1 of T and Z2 of T, having substituted the initial conditions, Z1 of zero, Z2 of zero, you'll get an expression that you're supposed to substitute into the final transformation, taking it back to the original format. X is equal to M times Z. Our Z functions, we got them from five. The modal matrix M, we got it from step one. Then we are able to get X1 and X2 as our final solution. Let us do an example. Example one that I have here, we're supposed to solve that system. Note that the left hand side represents X dot of T. And we have here on the right hand side, the system matrix, which is A. And we have the state vector X of T. And we have B multiplied by the input function and given of course are the initial conditions and an expression for u of t which in this case represents just the heavy side function or what is usually known as the unit step function so as has been depicted by the previous steps first thing that we've got to find are the spectral matrix and the modal matrix that's step one. This is the format that we use. It's always a the determinant of a minus lambda equal to zero. And then we do the substitution, find that determinant, and then solve for lambda. So we got lambda one equal to negative one and lambda two equal to negative three. And then the spectral matrix will have the eigenvalues in the main diagonal and we have zeros everywhere else. And then trying to find the modal matrix for lambda one. For lambda one, we substitute and where I got zero, zero in the first row and one and negative two, please check whether you're going to get the same. And we multiply that matrix by K1, K2 and equate it to zero, zero. Please note that it must be a zero vector because you can never multiply, you can never equate a product of two matrices to a number. It has to be a zero matrix on the right hand side and then multiplying out formulating equations to get k1 minus 2k2 equal to 0 and then we let k2 be equal to 1 for simplicity that gives us the first eigenvector to be 2 1 then again for the second eigenvalue again uh, substituting into a minus lambda and our lambda equal to negative three. Those are the values that I got. I got two, zero, one, and zero. Please check. Multiplied by K1, K2 equal to zero, zero. Now note that we only have two K1 plus zero K2 equal to zero in the first equation. One K1 plus zero K2 equal to zero in the second equation. Note that I decided to write zero times K2 in both equations to, to stress and 
to make sure that we understand k2 is not zero but k2 is multiplied by zero entries hence we can let k2 be equal to one and then simplifying both equations they give us that k1 is equal to zero please recall that no eigenvector can be equal to a zero vector hence because k1 is equal to one had we assumed that k2 is also equal to hence because k1 equal to zero and had we assumed that k2 is equal to zero then would have a problem of an eigenvector which is zero zero so we cannot have that kind of a situation hence we let k2 be equal to one because k2 can take any value because it's just k2 multiplied by zero that gives us a zero hence now the second eigenvector is zero one then that means our modal matrix is two one please note the order the first eigenvector was negative one therefore the first eigenvector must go in as the first column of the modal matrix and the second eigen value negative three gave us zero one as the second eigen vector corresponding to it thus zero one must be in the second column of the modal matrix our problems all require that we have m inverse that we'll need even for b we are going to need m inverse also for us to get the initial conditions for z we need this m inverse hence we need to calculate it and please make sure you specify it you can easily use your calculator to get m inverse or use one over the determinant of m multiplied by the adjoint of m you get the same answer and then calculate b remember that b is called m inverse times b m inverse we just um, calculated b was in the original equation and then we get half half for b and then also the initial condition of z is m inverse times x of zero and in this case our initial condition were also one one from the original equation therefore we get half half as well then the next step is for us to get an expression for z dot substitute for the spectral matrix substitute for z substitute for b and substitute for u which is one u which is our heavy side function and note that this is for t greater than or equal to zero then we do the multiplication come up with equations and then we write those equations in standard form note that they are first order differential equations both of them then in this case because we have p and q then that means you can use the integrating factor to solve for both z1 and z2 for z1 the integrating factor is e to the power t please check my steps i know that we multiply the integrating factor to z1 equal to the integral of q times the integrating factor and then we integrate and this still gives us half e to the power t plus c and i wrote c1 because I'm calculating z1 then multiply out by the integrating factor and this is the expression that we ended up having and then we used the initial condition z1 of 0 is equal to half and then in this expression wherever there is t substitute 0 e to the power 0 gives us 1 that's why we have half plus c1 
and then when we solve here you will get c1 equal to zero again we do the same for z2 please check the steps and that's what i got i got c2 equal to one over three and then that means the solution for z1 of t and z2 of t substituting the values for c1 and the values for c2 is given by those two expressions note that this is not the final solution originally we were not asked to solve for z we are asked to solve for x last, the last step therefore is to use that transformation that reverse transformation where x is equal to m times z x definitely is x1 x2 m is the modal matrix that we got from our calculations in the first step z we substitute z1 and z2 that we just got in the last step and then perform the multiplication remember that it's a row times a column always so we multiply two by half and zero times that expression so we get one and then to get x2 it's one times half plus one times the second expression for z2 and then solve simplify i can only add half and one over six and that gives me two over three and then the last part is just half is one over three e to the power negative three therefore we have found the solution we have solved x1 and we have solved x2 which is the what was required of us as part of exercises following the steps that you have just seen and we have just used do those exercises solve those state equations and for number two we're using the textbook advanced modern engineering mathematics the fourth edition by glenn james advanced modern engineering mathematics fourth edition by glenn james and then you go to exercise 1.10.4 and you do number 59 and you can also do number 60 and number 61, which is on page 94.